world-class infrastructure and cutting-edge manufacturing. This has been India's ambition for several years now. And spends towards realizing this dream have only been increasing. From just a little over 4 lakh crores in FI21, which was the start of the pandemic, to a whopping 10 lakh crore rupees in the current fiscal year, FY24, the government outlay on capital expenditure has more than doubled in the last three years. And now it seems that the wheels of private sector capex are also turning on the upside. All this spells big opportunity for large industrial companies. We are talking about firms that help factories go green, cities get smarter, and transportation networks get upgraded to a more faster, future-ready phenomena. Well, today I'm standing at the switchgear facility of one such large global industrial conglomerate. It's a company that needs no introduction because it has been in India for 100 years. I'm talking to you from the Mumbai facility of Siemens AG. And today I plan to chat with the top boss of Siemens AG, Roland Bush, who is the president and CEO, and ask him where exactly we are in the global industrial cycle and also just exactly the kind of opportunity Siemens sees ahead for itself here in India. Roland, uh, it's such a pleasure to be able to come here and meet you and you know, see your state-of-the-art facility. First of all, I want to ask you, you've chosen an interesting time to be in India, in Mumbai. It's the hottest time of the year. How are you feeling? Well, <laughs> actually, I like hot weather. Okay. Coming from Germany when it's cold and rainy, <laughs> you, you really want to escape. So oh. for me, it's absolutely fine. Uh -huh. And I, normally, I don't choose my, my scheduling for traveling, but uh -huh. according uh -huh. to the weather, <laughs> I go there when I have time. Oh, we we yeah. hope the Mumbai summer is not being too harsh <laughs> No, it's you. fine. I like okay, it. Okay, good like to it. know. Good to know. Uh, you know, I was also thinking when I was uh, coming over here for this conversation, that we're in very interesting times, right? We've got these really high interest rates around the world. We have banks blowing up or banks merging. We have prospects of a recession in the US. Uh, and in the midst of all of this, uh, one of your, your peer companies, European peers in the industrial space, uh, came out with some very positive commentary just the other day. Uh, I'm talking about ABB and you know, they increased their guidance, they doubled their guidance. And uh, that really got the market thinking and me thinking, saying, what's happening? You know, where exactly are we in the global industrial cycle? And is there really reason to be optimistic? Because otherwise, there's a lot of confusion and a lot of gloom and doom talk out there. Yeah, so, I mean, ABB, you just talked about that. Maybe they copied our press release from Q1, from our Q1, <laughs> because we, we have a little, a little bit earlier. And I was, I was, I was, even before that, when we released our last year, our this year's perspective, I was quite bullish. And the reason was that um, it's not only Siemens, but uh, many companies working on the industrial space sitting on a huge order backlog. Mm -hmm. It's really the, the COVID cycling up and down and supply chain problems, which brought us to a huge order backlog. And now supply chains are easing. So how great it is is if you start in a new year, huge order backlog and supply chains kicking in. Mm -hmm. So that means you can turn your backlog into revenue. And it's good because um, our delivery times were going up and up and up. So we really want to serve our customers better. So therefore it's good news. So, um, yes, I do believe there's a couple of clouds coming up. I mean, interest rates going up, as you said. Um, we have geopolitical tensions. We have, we have still supply chain topics. Semiconductors is not over yet. Um, it's, getting, it's getting better. I do believe, and now I'm talking more for Siemens markets, um, I'm also quite optimistic going forward because we are, we are basically serving some mega trends. Uh, they don't stop, and they require the investment despite uh, the fact that you might have some problems. I mean, talk about um, reducing CO2 reduction. Yes. Uh, this is yes. the whole uh, transformation of energy uh, driving green. You need battery productions. You need electric car pr productions. This yeah. requires investment. Mm -hmm. Is it about aging societies? Um, that's not only tailwind for our healthcare business, obviously, yeah. but it's also um, it's a labor shortage, which we see. Um, how, to, how do you fight labor shortage? It's about automation, digitalization, your manufacturing sites, for example. And that's what we can provide technology for our customers. So therefore, I'm quite optimistic. Um, there might be a bumpy road in 2024, maybe. But overall, I do believe we, we sit with our portfolio on a secular growth trend. Let's now talk about uh, the bigger themes that are really shaping the world uh, across, right? 
uh, as you mentioned, uh, decarbonization or you know, reducing emissions is one of them, and the other is uh, digitization and, and automation. I want to ta start with the technology piece first, because I, I think you've worn the technology hat at Siemens you know, for several years as well. Uh, so help us understand where we are in that uh, transition cycle. And now there's so much of talk of, uh, let's say, AI, generative AI. I know you folks have done a tie-up with Microsoft recently uh, you know, at, a, at a global level. Yep. Uh, so what is the near future really looking like when we're talking about this digital transformation? Yeah. So let me start in, in quoting what our strategy is, because it hits the nail. We're combining the real and the virtual, in the virtual world. So sounds easy. So what I'm saying here is that you have uh, IT in the OT world, uh, so the virtual world where you can simulate, they can design in the, in the real world where you build. And the big thing about the future and that what technology can really do is combining these two worlds mm -hmm. in order to drive productivity, shorten cycle times, keep your assets uh, longer in life or keep them up and running. And that's what I believe is changing all our markets, which I see, I can go from industry over buildings, grids, uh, to mobility and healthcare, will change all our markets. Uh, there's a lot of chatter about what technologies like generative AI, for instance, mean for mm -hmm. jobs. Yeah. So, your thoughts so, on those? So, um, <laughs> first and foremost, I strongly believe uh, companies uh, running risk to be irrelevant in the future if they do not deploy technology. Because is it about um, reducing your productivity if you don't do, or if you have a longer development cycle time as your competitor, you can count the clock until you're irrelevant. So I do believe it's not a question if, but um, when, you, when you invest in these technologies. Bigger problem though is, do you have the people? Because uh, running new technologies on the shop floor, you need to educate and train your people, which is, I do believe, one of the next to the technology development, taking the people along with you, educating and training them is the second biggest, biggest um, problem which you have to solve. We are investing more than 300 million in, in training education of our people, and I just saw our vocational training um, of people here, which is, which is amazing. So this combination has to happen, and it's some money very wisely spent if you go into technology. Coming to your second point about AI and does it replace jobs, so, in, glo glo uh, in a global view, um, population is aging. In India, not. No. Not yet. <laughs> it, it will come, it will come, still growing, but on a global scale, the population is aging. So that means you have, you have to invest in technology in order to really keep on your growth rates while having less and less labor in the market. So it's mandatory. Um, so the, and, and I give you one example, which is for me the most uh, compelling one. We have in Germany, in Amberg, we have an award-winning manufacturing site, which is maybe the, the most digitalized and virtualized site which you, which you have found, and um, they do PLCs. In the last, let's say, 15 years, they had, they started with, with 1,200 employees, mm -hmm. and today, they still have 1,200 employees. Okay. Yet the output of that site increased by 10 or 15 times. So therefore, we still have employment there. Sure. The jobs look completely different mm -hmm. from that where the job looked 10 to 15 years before. So it's not a matter of fact uh, whether you ha don't have people employed, you have different jobs, mm -hmm. and that's the point. For India, the message would be that you still have, of course, semi-automated manufacturing lines, you will have people on the shop floor. If you get more and more complex products to India, mm. you also cannot avoid, rather than deploying technology and automate it, you cannot run a battery manufacturing side with labor. You need to automate it. So therefore, also for India, uh, this digital trend or digital transformation is relevant. All right, got that. Uh, now let's talk about the other mega global trend, and that's uh, decarbonization, the whole energy transition piece. Uh, what kind of an opportunity has it thrown up in the last couple of years, and you know, what's the opportunity you see ahead for a company like Siemens uh, in all markets, and specifically one like India? Yeah. So most of the time when we talk about the energy transition, people talk about energy production. Let me start in the, on the other end, on the consumption side, because every kilowatt hour you don't consume, doesn't require eventually maybe three kilowatt hours 
fed in to your grid. Mm -hmm. So therefore, the best thing is start on energy efficiency. And, and that's what we do a lot. Uh, we do a lot of in, in manufacturing space, in the building space, in the transport. So this is one thing. Mm -hmm. Then working ourselves upwards, upstream, next is the grid. Mm -hmm. Our energy transition, obviously going to renewables, meaning you go electric. Mm -hmm. Because going renewable would mean basically photovoltaics or wind. Mm -hmm. And here you have green electrons coming in. So that means you have to invest in the expansion of your grid. It's the transmission grid, but also the distribution grid, because then you, as a, you're feeding energy back from the reverse. You have charge, charging, e-car e charging and the like. So you have to ramp up your grids. You have to do that a smart way, because you don't want to uh, build them up for the peak demand, but for that, what you, how you can manage the peak. So you have to, sh you have to shape the peaks in order to not over-invest. So it requires basically smart grids. Uh, that's where Siemens is market leader. We, ought to, we are market leader in automating grids. We, we, we currently develop a new software for controlling grids. You know, on, on um, the energy transition piece, just a question. Uh, a large amount of India's uh, capacity in the power space is, is still thermal power. In fact, we're still adding more thermal power. Does that present any sort of a conflict? Because internationally, ESG is the big theme. And every company, I'm sure even Siemens included, every company wants to be more and more ESG compliant. So how do you balance the two? I can understand uh, the situation in India because you have a fast growing country mm -hmm. uh, and you need energy to fuel it. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, I know that India is tr uh, tremendously fast ramping up the renewable capacities, maybe faster than any other country in the world. And you are amongst the fourth largest, I guess, regarding the share of renewables. But even that is not good enough. So you still have to keep on going, building fossil power plants. I think that will, that will fade out and you will kick in more and more renewables as we speak. Um, is it a problem? I mean, in principle, yes, because we are, we are heating up our, global, our, our, our globe too fast. So we, we really have embedded this 1.5 degrees, I think it's already embedded, so we have to fight in, in all dimensions to get it down. Okay. On the other side, I know that um, you're working on this energy transition of your system. Each company has to deal with it um, in its own way. Um, Talk making their ESG program, setting out their targets. Most of them are setting a target for being carbon neutral by 2030. So we'll see there are, there's a lot of momentum coming on. But, um, but at least there's a, there's a commitment from India to go for carbon neutral. And I think they will execute it. India will execute it.